you would like to sponsor. You have great product. First, I want to ask you guys a question. Okay. Rank these three rappers. Kendrick, J. Cole, and Drake. Question. Are we talking about overall career or current greatness? I would say overall career. I got really scared when you started asking this question because I thought you were going to say it's people I didn't know. But I know these so I can contribute and have good answers. You know what they say, or at least what one man said, ain't no big three, it's a big me. I was just about to say that. <laughs> uh, that's so fire to me. But um, all-time career, uh, another question. What are we? What am I ranking right now? Like enjoyability or like who's better as far as like. Your personal one, two, three okay, of those you. three. He's cooking. Cole is three. This is my problem. <laughs> Good Drake for me is one. But he's got so much mid that it's like it it's like it weighs it down. So I'm going I'm going Cole, Drake, Kendrick, personally. Going Drake, <laughs> J. Cole, Kendrick. Mm. Would you like me to give my reasoning too? Sure. Um, Drake. I just like a lot of his music. And during my young years, it was very nostalgic for me. So a big fan. And then uh, J. Cole, lyrical genius, I would say, of this generation. But... Because uh, I also don't know many from the past. He's kind of like top tier. Mm. But I know more of Drake's music, which is why I put him one. And then Kendrick. I don't know that many Kendrick songs. Therefore, I put him at the bottom. There you go. It's fair. Yeah. If we're talking overall career, but me personally, I would say J. Cole won. Drake two, Kendrick three. It's a good. That's a good take though. But if I want to talk straight bars, Kendrick, J Cole, Drake. Indeed. All good takes. I, I think would, all are good artists. I would say J Cole one because, to me, there's a lot of like, throwbacks like workout. Mm -hmm. is just a classic to me. There's mm -hmm. and like Four Hills Drive is a great album just to listen to straight. Yeah. See, this is my thing with Cole. It's like Forest Hills Drive is really good. What's his next best project? KOD. See, to me, that project is not good. Mm. This is my thing. Cole is good, but his best project is like just leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of them to me. So it's like, I feel like the conversation is quick with him. Mm. It's like when you start putting albums head to head against each other, I feel like that one album is like so heavyweight. But then That's afterwards, true. like, I feel like you can't match up. Mm. But I feel like that's the same with Drake. That's not true. Nah, Drake the has first, so like, many. Six yeah. albums are like fire. What album? I give this to. People. Name three. Three. Better than Four Souls Drive. Well, we weren't saying better. Just we were just saying in class. that. Okay. Well, you got to think of the album that had Best I Ever Had, Marvin's Room, Trophies. That's, that's those, <laughs> none, none of those are on the same project. <laughs> no, not a single I'm chalk. <laughs> I thought it was the one where he had. I thought not, that was the same not one. A single one of those. <laughs> I thought they were all the same one. Nah. Okay, Best I Ever Take Had. Take care. Take care. That Look, album is great. Best I ever had was on So Far Gone. Oh. Marvin oh, right. Room was on Take Care. Mm. And Trophies was on the Young Money album. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, the Take Care album That's up is there. great. That's up there. 
Um, well, then all those three, actually, for real. I wouldn't say that first one is like, I think it had great singles. Oh yeah. Oh, I think that, I think it had great singles. Mm. Like, I can go, like, I did this actually. I went through, like, just to see, like, is Drake really that dude? I went through mm. all his albums and picked out the songs that I liked. Mm. And there was like three or three, four on every album. I'm mm. like, okay. It's solid. Like, there's a solid song list I could pick from him, but mm. there's not one album I could listen to straight through and just be like, yes. Bro, have you ever listened to Nothing Was the Same? I have. Bro, that album, top to bottom. Fire. There's no bad song on there. Those are elite tracks. Elite tracks. What's on the album? I don't know. On Nothing Was the Same? No, yeah. Hold like, on, we're going home. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, from time to time. Furthest thing from time Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, Bro, yeah, like, yeah that what? was great. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Yeah. Pound Cake on that album? Yes. It's a solid album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then for me, Kendrick, like, I feel like his best is not as elite to everyone as J. Cole and Drake's best, but I feel like he's consistent. Like, I feel like all his projects fall in a similar ranking, and it's not, like, a bad ranking, you know? Consistent. I think... He's very he is very consistent. I would say it's just he doesn't drop as often as J. Cole and Drake. True. And that's why like people be like, I don't know. Because they just, you know, that he hasn't been around in a while and then he drops, everybody loves it for a few weeks, and then it's like he goes ghost again. So it's not it's really not comparable, I guess, to other people to like put him up there, but when he drops, like Usually a hit. That's true. But all of this considered, we have to remember that really the greatest rapper of all time has had it has to be future. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I messed him up. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh yeah, I don't know about that one. He is good. His, I I would say his beat selection is good. He has like, I'm definitely of a production side type of person. When the production's nice and when it really hits, that's the French kiss. Now, real quick, before we start talking about what we're actually talking about, I did want to say, because this is going to be the first episode that comes out after our personal episodes. So, like, real quick, before we actually get into the real episode, do y'all want to say anything, like, about that experience? Shoot. That was kind of scary, not going to lie. Mm -hmm. I'd share a lot. You guys were saying you already knew most of it, but to me, when I was writing that, I was like, oh, shoot, I'm about to get laughed at. But then it all got saved for yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> um... But no, that was a good time. I mean, I mean, and if I'm being honest, I feel like thank you for your cuts because <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it after I was like, dang, I probably framed some people in like the wrong light. Like I didn't mean it like that. It was more just like everybody had a place like in the story, mm -hmm. and some people were more antagonist than protagonist. Mm. But no hard feeling towards anybody though. Nobody at all. Did you watch? Did you guys both watch your guys' back? Yeah. I don't plan on watching mine back. Mm. I understand that. Like, I feel like I said all I should say. Not everything I could say, per se, because mm. I mean, it's not for everybody. True. Like, everything. True. Like, that any of us went through. There are reasons why there, there have been cuts. Yeah. yeah. You know? Lots and lots of cuts. <laughs> but, uh, Pedro? I feel like I said what I needed to say. And I'm just going to let it be. And remember my disclaimer. Don't be trying to talk to me. About yeah, please don't hit me up. Yeah. Please don't hit me <laughs> like, If we haven't spoken in a very long time, mm. do not hit me up Even now. if I see you. Every day. <laughs> every day. Like, let it be. Hey. Uh. 
Hey, I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm not mad. It's a good take. Only person I can really ask. Nah, I ain't gonna say that. You know who you are. Wink, wink. Wow. Um, I have one other thing. Oh. Just that. Um, after discussing all this and then talking to you guys and hearing your guys' story, I, I'm just me, and you are just you, and you are just you. And sometimes we think, you know, we gotta like try to be like other people. Or we try to, we have to, um, we're the only ones going through certain things. But everybody goes through stuff and it makes them who they are. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate both of you guys for who you are. Even though you guys had a real upbringing and watched real TV. Oh, God. And it's listened bad. to real music. <laughs> wait. Oh, wait, no. But that's that's going on Patreon, bro. So they don't get that. They don't understand that joke. Oh, uh, well, I'll just say this then. We had an off-air conversation where they asked me, have you heard this song, this song? Have you seen this TV show and movie? And I was like, nah, which is why. I couldn't uh, tell you what songs were on which Drake album. <laughs> but that being said, still my favorite artist in that genre. So but I, still, I still haven't got the knowledge certified like BH. Come with me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. oh boy! I guess so. Can I, I just say you? You are too. <laughs> <laughs> Put the camera on you. <laughs> he said you are too. No. Oh my goodness! All right, I just want to say, kind of like what you were alluding to a little bit. Like, I've already had people like reach out, just like appreciating and like taking value from my episode and my episode dropped yesterday yeah so like this this is the purpose this is the point like Mm. i don't care how many views any of these episodes get when the first person hit me up Mm. if if that person ended up being the only person that said anything i would have been like this is it it worked satisfied because like just the the words that people will share in response to something like that is like you really did something you really helped somebody yeah so i appreciate both of you for being willing to do that for our audience and being willing to do that just for me you know i appreciated hearing y'all stories for sure and yeah hopefully the content that we continue to make will continue to bless people in that capacity because that it, it has been enjoyable to really have people say they got value or like were made to feel like they weren't alone about something. Like there's nothing like it. So appreciate anybody who went out of their way to actually say something like that as well. And as always, thank you guys for rocking with us. With that being said. Welcome to the Mutual Friend Podcast. I am Gabe. And I'm Dre. And I'm Matt. And today, you know, we started off talking about some rap music, some secular music, as people would say in the church. And that's just sometimes labeled in the category of a secular lifestyle. Mm. And when... You call yourself a Christian when you live the walk that you feel like God has called you to, that you're trying to live. It can be hard sometimes. We fall, but we get up. True story. Not by honor cord, but by the Lord's strength. Mm. But when we fall, I feel like we can seem as though We are living a double life in other people's eyes. Mm. Because it's when they see your failures, they feel like they see the real you. Mm. When that's not the case, in my opinion. How do you gentlemen feel? I'm really sorry. Uh, I had one other thing. (laughs) This is, no, that was a great intro. Let's give it up for Gabe. That was fire. Now, 
I have one other thing that's very important I wanted to make sure I said regarding mm-hmm. the episodes that we did. All three of us are in a relatively good space right now compared to some other things we've been through. But you have to understand this is not the end of our stories. Because we all were kind of able to put a nice bow on the end of our story and it's like, now I'm in a good place and blah, blah, blah. And for other people, it's like, they know that in their life situation currently, they're not in a good space. And so they might look at our lives and be like, well, that's good for them, but like I'm down bad and whatnot. But it's like, we still are going through things currently that we're processing through. And also there may be some other things to come that maybe aren't favorable, some things that are favorable. Basically, I don't I don't like framing it as though you remember in like reading class we would get the the diagram of like the mountain. Yeah. And it would be like exposition, mm. uh, inciting incident and like like our stories, we were able to frame them that way cuz like we're telling a story, but it's like in real life you're not going to be at a point where you're actually at the ending. And it's just everything, all conflict is resolved and whatnot. Like, life goes on. So, like, just because our stories, the way that we told it, are present is, like, more favorable. Don't look at your own life and be like, well, that's good for them, but I can't have that for me. It's like, no, life is a complex journey for everybody. So, never give up on your story. It's not over yet. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that in there. Still in the prelude. Still in the prelude. It's not the end until it's the end. Mm. Yeah, we're all always still in a process of continually evolving, going through different life stages, and ultimately as believers to continue to in our sanctification process, right? Becoming more like the Lord. Now, for the audience who might not know, what is sanctification? Can we define it you see to be honest that's one of those words where i know <laughs> like what it means but i don't know the definition mm-hmm. you're just living it though yeah for sure could you the process of being made holy exactly the process I actually I of which that. you are made holy now as believers this is something we should try for because we want to honor the lord with holiness but we all know that we are not there yet um, because we're human beings, we're flawed, we go through a lot of changes, um, but we still contrive to be holy. Now, for the audience, again, who doesn't know? They might hear that word holy and be like, oh, big church word, big religious word. But what does holy mean? Holy means... Christ-like. Indeed. Christ-likeness is holiness. Matt? I concur with that sentiment. Mm. Now, what makes Christ's life holy and what makes our life holy is, again, by defining the word holy, which means to be set apart. I was going to say sinless. Sinless is the ultimate example of holiness, which we all are striving for, but um, set apart, right? That's what holy means. And it's it's quite the touchy subject in today's culture of Christianity because a lot of people don't like the word or even the concept of Holiness, because some people can say it sounds legalistic. Do you know what I mean by that? It's like you gotta like follow the rules. You gotta like mm. you gotta do a certain thing and not do certain things, and that's what people associate with holiness. Mm-hmm. Because of a lot of people who you know have been so strict, on you know on almost like unnecessarily. Like I don't know if I don't know what you guys like what your background is, but I know there's been you know. 
churches in the past who wouldn't let their women like wear pants or like wear makeup. And if you're a man and you came and you didn't wear a suit, you just like you like weren't trying to be holy or whatever. Just make up all these ridiculous rules, you know. Um, I'm sure you've heard of in the past, like if you danced like that, like I was like, oh, you're like world. Trying to dance like David danced. Shoot, facts. Um, but yeah, they be putting all these weird rules, so people are kind of just like against the whole idea because they think it's like legalistic. But the Bible talks about holiness a lot, and I think it's something that sometimes is neglected in the Christian space because a lot of times we just talk a lot about, you know, me, 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 you know, um. But I think holiness is an important, important aspect. Yes. I would say most, you said like most churches, you feel like get away from that, right? Uh, I didn't say most. I just said there's an attitude against using the word. So I would say the attitude comes from a place, in my opinion, that like holiness is something that's hard to strive for, for like anyone. Mm. So to like tell somebody to be holy in a church setting it could come off as like an impossible task in some sort of way. Mm. Even though that's what's asked of us. Yeah. So it's like for a church to like tell that to a their community. Like Pastor Dan talked about holiness not too long ago. Mm. But like like you said, like the attitude towards it, I feel like that could be a part of it. Yeah. I think like you say all the time. Um, it is impossible on our own strength, mm -hmm. but with the Lord, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Um, so first Peter one verses 14, 16, 14 through 16 say as obedient children, that's us. Mm. Do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy. So be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy, because I am holy. Now that is an extremely convicting passage. Because we always talk about how we want to do what God wants us to do. We're trying to live for God. But that means like we can't revert back and fall back into our natural evil desires. Because I don't know about you guys. But I'd be having some evil desires sometimes, you know? I know. Yeah. <laughs> they, they all know. <laughs> um, but look, it says the evil desires you had when you lived in Nader. And so, like, before you knew the Lord, sometimes we still, like, regress back to our old ways. But God's holy. And he's called us to be holy. It could have just ended at God is holy, period. But it says God is, is holy, and he's called you to be holy. So what does that mean? To you gentlemen. To be holy? Well, just this whole, the whole passage. I mean, like Jesus, I feel like that's the best answer I could give to anyone when it comes to living a holy life. Like he walked this earth 33 years, completely sinless. Went through things much harder than we will ever do. Like he carried the burden of the cross. Yeah. He carried the burden of everyone's sins on his shoulders when he died. Mm hmm he was persecuted. He had people trying to just get at him all the time, try to discredit anything he said, like the Pharisees. We would go through similar things, but he did it perfect. So just walk like him. Mm -hmm. I would say when it comes to holiness and sanctification, it really comes down to a threshold that takes you to one word. So the threshold would be, like you said, going from ignorance to crossing over to now having the understanding of what is expected of you. So I would say the, the expectation is what that threshold represents. Now that you understand the expectation, the one word is effort. Mm. It is on you to put forth the best effort in becoming more like, like you said, emulating Christ. Mm -hmm. 
of course, we're going to stumble. We're going to fail. We're going to go back to some of our old ways sometimes. But the word is effort. You must keep trying. You must learn from those stumbling blocks and mistakes. How can I improve this moving forward? And then you just go through the process of continuing to get better and better. Mm. I love the word effort. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like you got to put effort into like every area of your life. The verse said, "The verse said, be holy in all you do." Yep. Mm-hmm. It's not just like you know. I'll just kind of, you know, when I feel like it, I'll try to be holy in this be holy one area. In church. Right. Oh, come on. Talk about it. But it's like you got to put in the effort, like you said, in every area. Some some things that we don't necessarily want to sacrifice for the Lord. Ooh, that's another good word. Sacrifice, sacrifice, yeah. And again, I like the word effort because another verse for you, Hebrews 12, 4, make every effort mm. to live in peace with everyone and... To be holy. Why? Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. It's crazy. It's crazy. But it's crazy. Again, you said make every effort. Like, it's not going to be something that's just going to come naturally, right? You got to put in the effort to be holy. Actually, what's going to come naturally is our our failures mm. in mm-hmm. the attempt of being holy. So mm. it's like, so, like you were alluding to earlier when we spoke, that that battle, that confrontation that is happening within yourself is is something serious because it's like the easy route, the natural default, the if you have a lazy or what's the word I'm looking for? I don't think lackadaisical is what I wanted to say, but whatever, you know what I mean? Maybe apathetic. Yeah. Somewhere along those lines, <laughs> it was so, so. You know what I mean? Like if you're just not putting too much direct thought into it, passively mm. thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that good. wasn't the word either. But whatever. Oh, if you're just passively thinking about it, then you're going to fail. Like it's not even about choosing to do the wrong thing. It's about the absence of doing the right mm-hmm. thing is failure. That's yeah. just what is going to happen every single time. And it's crazy to think that. People in this world are just fighting this spiritual battle between flesh and spirit and don't even realize they're in a fight. Mm. It's good. It's like, they always, like, you always hear people say, like, just something's missing. Like, there's just something missing in my life. I just kind of try to find it when walking the walk that we try to live, we know what it is. We know, like, Jesus is the answer, but they don't. And as disciples, we want to try to disciple these people in any way God has given us the opportunity to to like show them like that hidden not even hidden to us but hidden to them that hidden like weapon mm. in the fight that's always there when we want to call, call on them you know mm. yeah it's like y- y'all ever have anybody that's like every time you ask how they're doing they're like I'm alright I guess just, just trying to figure things out like, mm. it's because they like you said they think that they're in like a neutral zone, not realizing they're in the losing side of the battle because they don't know that they're in a battle. They're in the danger zone. Danger zone. Danger zone. Mm. That, that's really good. That's a really good analogy. To think about. I wanted to ask you guys a question. Oh. Because <clears throat> this has always been a thought that like, I've always wondered like, could I actually do it? And the thought is, could you go twenty four hours without sinning? In any way, shape, or form. Do you think you could go 24 hours? How long can I sleep for? See, I would think that's a sin because that's laziness. That's, <laughs> that's a sin. Because that was one of my first thoughts when I ever thought about this question to myself. I'm like... Well, what if you were working for like 48 hours at a time? Could you fall? Could you sleep for 24 hours? Is that even possible to sleep for 24 hours? The well, longest, I, the longest I ever slept was like when I was in like high school. I went to sleep at like one something. Woke up at like three in the afternoon on a, like a Saturday. Well, I'm going to sleep, or pardon me, I'm going to send in my sleep because <laughs> them, them, them <laughs> dreams. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Is that sending though? I mean, that's thought. I don't know. That's thought. I, thought. I don't know. This is like, that's a very good hypothetical. I think I, okay, I don't have any solid answers on this right now. However, I can 
what's the word? Postulate? Is that the word? Or like, <laughs> hey, you finally got me with one. I don't know. Oh, what that means. let's go. <laughs> He's the walking thesaurus and he knows all the words. I but never know. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like thinking, right? Hypothetically thinking, basically. That's what it means. I think. So um You better be right. I'm about to look it up real quick before I just said something. That's a slur. Yeah, you can't look. <laughs> I can't lose my thesaurus postulate. title without a fight. That boy said postulate. Oh, shoot. Let's see. A thing suggested or assumed as true as the basis for reasoning, discussion, or belief. Okay. I don't think that's what um, Suggest or assume the existence, fact, or truth of something on a basis of reasoning, discussion, or I belief. Remember the His theory postulated <laughs> a, ro- a rotary <laughs> movement for hurricanes. Oh, wait. What? Okay. Wait, what? What? I don't even. I'm more confused. Okay, now. okay, whatever. That's the word, though. Hey, don't throw Postulate. a word like that at us again. <laughs> I'm about to make a new word every time. <laughs> or find one, not make one. Mm. It's a real word. Anyway, so I could think this, right? <laughs> when reading the Bible, okay, you guys, of course, you read multiple verses of the Bible at a time hopefully like multiple chapters at a time you start to kind of sense like the like the flavor of the writer like how they're like how they're writing you kind of tell their tone of voice like you know and sometimes i'd be reading this and i i really think like man like some of these people were probably so devoted to living a holy life that in theory they probably could have gone 24 hours or more without sinning before falling into sin but because they took it so seriously and obviously, of course, relying on the Lord's strength. But I think that that's a possibility. And I think another one, um, we got to think like we operate in one branch of Christianity. And I'm very modern take and with oh, the influence of the world that we have now that people don't always have. So... um. For others in different time periods or maybe different cultures, like it could be easier or harder to go without sinning. So I think it's definitely a possibility, um, especially because there were people who, like there's not to get all deep, but there's literal groups of Christianity that would basically make the claim that sanctification, full sanctification is possible in this life, but it takes like a long, long time. So they would believe that like you could keep practicing and being obedient and trusting God enough to where, you know, you get to a point where your sin is so like rare. And then my last, my last take is, um, you know, the story where Jesus goes to this guy and this guy's like, well, how can I be saved? Um, I don't know. He's like, I've kept every commandment since I was a child. Mm hmm. How do I, you know, what else do I have to do to enter the kingdom? And Jesus is basically like, you got to sell everything. Hmm. And he's like, oh, dang. And he started crying, basically. Now, notice Jesus didn't say, well, that's actually not true because I know your thoughts and I know blah, blah, blah. Like, what if this guy really did keep all of those commandments from the time he was a child? Of course, except for possibly the greed one. Um... So there could have been a time where this guy was so obedient to the word at the time that he could have gone a day or two, a couple days without sinning. All that to answer, (laughs) all that long-winded answer for your question, I think it's possible. For you? No. (laughs) No. Not now, but I'm not saying that can't be the case later on. But not now, no. Hmm. I also don't think it's a sin to, like, strive for that. I don't think so either. Yeah. For me, it'd be it'd be the thoughts, like, what's going on in your heart. It's like, where I'm in life right now, it's like, nah, I can't, I can't get through a day without having a thought. That's, that's just, just being honest, that's where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. Because, like, I would think, like, <clears throat> when I would try to answer, like, if I could or not, I'd be like, if I just set a schedule, you know, 
wake up at this time, do this, then this, then this, and just try to stick to it. Maybe it's possible. But then I would think, like, what if I, like, stub my toe and, like, in my head I go off? Mm. I'm like, dang, I got to start over tomorrow. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, but honestly, though, that is, like, how we should try to live every day. Exactly. Which I think we don't always hold ourselves to that standard because we have this idea, like, well, everybody sins, we're all imperfect, which is true. But then it's, like, our standard for our living is so low because we hold ourselves to such a low standard. Mm-hmm. So my thought process is, all right, say you go 24 hours, bang, 24 hours, 24 hours is up, right? God's like, do it again. Because mm. it's like, we put time, uh, I put like in the in the question, there's a mm. time limit on it. Mm. But once that time's up, it's like, there's another 24 hours coming. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah. Then do it again. Yeah. Do it again. And I think if your heart is to honor God, not so you can say like, oh, I'm so perfect and holy, you're in a good place. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I definitely can say this, and I'm sure you guys could agree. Um, at times where, where I've been hyper-focused on the things of God, I will go throughout days and be, again, just so focused on God where it's like, shoot, like I actually had a, I hate to frame it like this, but like a good day, like morally, mm-hmm. where it's where if you really look back at like how you, what you did during the day, what you thought about, like you're actually pretty cool. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like I feel like it's possible. So one of my favorite verses in the Bible, James one twenty two, do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. You know, other translations say, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers of it, mm-hmm. lest you're foolish. Lots of other translations. But basically, the gist is, especially for those who are Christians, go to church, listen to sermons, listen to great podcasts, maybe like this one, you know, and you call yourself a, a believer, and you're just hearing all of it, but you're not actually putting it into action. You're not actually, like, striving to live a true holy life in every area. Then you're deceiving yourself. And you're foolish. And I think it kind of ties, like, all this stuff with holiness together because, you know... We know God is holy, but do we respect him enough and even respect ourselves enough to truly put uh, holy actions into our lives? It's a question for you gentlemen. Can you direct the question a little okay. more? Okay, how about this? When you hear the verse, don't just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. What does that mean to you? Do what the Bible says. And what does that look like in your life for you personally? For me personally, it is striving to, one, grow my relationship with the Lord personally. Two, be good to those around me. And three, be the same me when even even when no one else is around. Big. I concur heavily with those points, but I would just like to add, we talk a lot about, sorry, thought I was about to sneeze. We talk a lot about being more like Jesus, but the Bible is a pretty big book. Sure. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, although a majority of the Bible points towards Jesus' life or, you know, deals with the after effects and whatnot from Jesus' existence. And you should be trying to model Jesus. But the big thing for me that I've come to start doing as of recent is to learn from the entire Bible and just try to apply the values to myself, mm-hmm. whether that be things that people did that were like so great and honorable, but also this is the thing that I've, I've picked up later in life, learning from the mistakes of the people True. that are all throughout the Bible because mm-hmm. 
these are flawed individuals. They they were not perfect because they were not Jesus. And we're not perfect because we're not Jesus. Indeed. Mm-hmm. So it's good to like look at the successful, triumphant moments where like people who had like strong faith or were obedient to God, like where they succeeded. But also, if you look at the failures and shortcomings of people in the Bible, like there's a lot of value you can take from that. So I would say when you read the Bible, just be thorough and like the simple lessons, of course, that are, are important too. Like, oh, David slayed Goliath, or oh, Daniel was in the lion's den, but he was faithful and whatnot. Like, that's good. But also look at like when it went bad for folks, and ask yourself, okay, how would this look in my life, and how could I strive to not make the mistakes that some of these people made. Mm-hmm. To that, I will say, for me personally, I don't know if you guys can agree with this or not, but to me, I feel like I relate more to people that, like, aren't Jesus in the Bible. Like, I I feel like reading Abraham's story, I can re- relate to his story in many ways more. Mm-hmm. Not, not be like, basically because, like, I know I can't measure up, actually, to what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. But that's, like, our calling to do so. Mm-hmm. But I can just relate more to, like, I'll say, like, Abraham for me because, side story, when I was younger, you know this, one of the nicknames I had was Gabrius, mm-hmm. and I was, like, I always thought that was a little weird. But then this this father of uh, one of my classmates would call me Gabraham. And, like, it was always just, like, Gabraham, I don't get it. But, like, once I was out of school, it was just, like, one of those times when I was just, like, reading, I was, like... Abraham that can't just be random right Mm. like that name stuck with me so I went back read about Abraham and like I really related to a lot of the things he was going through and it just that's just one little thing to where like it helped me in my walk you know what's funny for most of my life I hated my name but when I went on the fast that I'm always referencing and I, I like, didn't know what scripture I should be reading. I was like, I'm going to go ahead and just read Matthew because it was my name. Mm-hmm. And, like, the amount of value that I got from reading that book at that time, I was like, it has been worth it being Matthew wow. this entire time. <laughs> wow. Because, like, if, if that wasn't my name, that's not what I would have read. Mm. And, like, that's what I needed to read right at that time. Right. That's an interesting story. But also... To highlight what you said about like relating more to the other people in the Bible, that's why it's so important that we have the whole Bible mm-hmm. because you're supposed to strive to pattern Christ, but you're also supposed to learn from all of these other individuals that are in there. So like, that's why the whole thing is just so important. Yeah, you know maybe that Abraham thing was a prophecy because you have many sons. Who knows? Surprise to the audience. Mm-hmm. I'm kidding. <laughs> At least. I'm kidding. Huh? Never mind. What? I was going to say, at least it's not many daughters. <laughs> Lord. I, I, I already know it's coming from me, so I've accepted it. It's fine. Shoot. You can say that for yourself. That's what I said. Good. <laughs> Give it all to him. I'm going to have one. I think. If Good I for you. Guess. I feel like I'm prepared for it. Shoot. Good for you. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> for you no but it's it's very interesting though that you guys bring up just the kind of the relatability of the other people in the bible because they definitely had a lot of them like very grand callings on their lives but they struggled because they deal with an identity of who they were and the identity of who god called them to be see jesus he knew who was him from the beginning Mm -hmm. right the others were Especially, like, it's interesting you bring up Matthew, but, like, a lot of the disciples, they had other identities before Christ came to them and said, hey, this is your new, this is your new identity. I think for us, sometimes we become Christians, we take our faith seriously, and we automatically just want to snap our fingers and become Jesus right away. Flip that switch. Instead of realizing, like, we have to learn a new identity. (laughs) What? (laughs) You did. (laughs) You said flip the switch. So I said... 
<laughs> we were talking about Drake earlier. I don't know nobody else is doing this. Hey. <laughs> anyway. All right, let's continue. Um. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> we don't always realize that. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> okay. Get y'all in mind. I'm, I'm ready. Good. No, I'm. I'm me. good. I was just thinking, the hand gesture yeah, got me. Old. Yeah, yeah. I'm. You I'm cool. <laughs> We have to realize that we are dealing with a whole identity that we used to have and we're battling with who God has called us to be. And sometimes it is a struggle, especially when like you're still connected to like people from your past or like old habits from your past. Like you always like might struggle with. I like revert to being this person when I know I should be this person. And sometimes um, living a holy life is hard because we're stuck living a double life of being someone who we know we're not supposed to be anymore. And for me, like this was a big, big struggle at the end of high school because like I said in my episode, like I'd always dealt with like fitting in. So when I started like, you know, taking the Lord more seriously later on in high school, it was definitely a struggle, like, especially, like, mentally and, like, the things I thought about and said and, like, old habits just because, like, like, I was still in the same environment and some of those same people were, like, still around. So it was easy for me to kind of, like, regress back to who I was. And I fought that a lot during my senior year of high school. And um, when I went to college, it was, like, a complete, like, new slate. It was, like, I'm this who I am now and there's no one else like telling me like who I used to be but still sometimes I would struggle because of the whole integrity thing because it's like I would project one version of myself like basically like the ideal version of myself like who I really wanted to be but then in private I would still sometimes regress to my old ways mm -hmm. and um I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with that before but I certainly have as y'all heard in my episode, I literally was going by a different name for a while. And it's it's so it's kinda ironic because I was trying to make myself a different person for me while God was trying to form me into a new version of myself for him. Mm. So it all ended up working out, but I I caused a lot of friction from the plan that God like had for me because I I kept trying to be this cooler version of myself that mm -hmm. like had more going for him but like I I just didn't have the mindset or the proper priorities to know that I should be striving to be sanctified. I was really just trying to find different versions of worldly success like having mm -hmm. a bunch of money or like having cool braids because i have braids at the time they were pretty cool though thank you yeah or like i mentioned uh just having a bunch of women or having and we did talk about solomon <laughs> modeling our lives <laughs> oh man but yeah just like stuff like that like i kept trying to add like badges of worldly status to myself to make myself a new person mm. who I could think was cool. Mm. But God was like putting me through all these transition phases so that I could become who I am now. Mm. I'll say, I feel like I'm, I feel like I've mentioned this before. Like there was a point in my life when I felt like there was a difference between Gabriel and Gabe. Like who knew me by what name? Like my family knew me by Gabriel. Mm -hmm. My friends knew me by Gabe. And I always felt like maybe they're just, like, two different sides to me. But oh, it wasn't shit. until I realized, like, through my walk, through, like, everything I had been through, like, it's the same person. I'm just putting myself in two different lanes. And once I, like, refocused my life in the direction I believe God wanted me to go, it was, it, I saw this symmetry Symmetry? Symmetry. The symmetry between the two lives I thought I was living, but really it was the one life. I was just vulnerable in one and invulnerable in the other. 
And it was that change that, like, helped me see the difference, that helped me see that there was no difference mm-hmm. in between the two that I thought there was. Mm-hmm. So knowing that, like, especially both of you guys, you know, really had the almost, like, double personality, you know, situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, how does someone overcome that struggle of basically almost living in two worlds or being two different people or whatever? Know yourself, love yourself, accept yourself. That's really all it is. You gotta, you have to care about yourself and your own well being and stepping into your own purpose before you can make the decision to follow what this Jesus guy has for you. Cause like if you don't if you don't care about becoming that best version of yourself that God wants you to be, mm-hmm. then you're not gonna take the steps involved in this process of sanctification we're talking about. It's like who cares? Like I'd rather get the respect of my peers or like have status in a worldly sense like you're just going to keep leaning towards those things so first you have to have genuine like love for yourself and like really know who you are so that you're not wandering around aimlessly misguided Mm. Mm -hmm. can i also add to that at least for my personal experience with like trying to leave behind like who I was in the past, yes, I had to love myself. Mm -hmm. I had to know myself because I had to know, you know, what my shortcomings were. But lastly, I had to deny myself. Mm. Because it's like, once you do love yourself, you'll know, like, okay, I love myself, so I want what's best for me. Mm -hmm. I know myself, I mean, I'm not going to deny, like, you know, what I struggle with. Like, the facts is, I deal with this, this, and that, and this is not acceptable. So the last part for me was just denying myself. Like every time I'd have a, and I still do this, every time that I have a thought of like regressing back, I'm like, no, that is not who I am. And that has been extremely helpful for me. And I would definitely encourage someone who, you know, is going through this process of like, especially in the early stage of sanctification, is you have to deny yourself your sinful desires. Gabriel? That's really good. I'm glad you said that. You threw me that loop. <laughs> so Wade Brown. Through the process of sanctification, it is hard in the beginning, but it's about breaking those habits that you're used to. That was very key for me in my process. Like mm. it was like I can be myself around anybody that mm. I'm like that I consider myself cool with or friends with, acquaintances, whatever the case may be. But it's what I was doing that was habitual. Like, in, I felt comfortable enough, I guess, in that situation where I could feel like I could let my spirit down and let my, fresh, my flesh, like, come up and, like, enjoy it because that's just what I did in that situation. But it was, like, knowing, like, my habits determine, like, how I live my day-to-day in a sense. And it's the day-to-day to where it's like daily picking up that cross and giving your burdens to him. Like that's that process. And I read somewhere that like it takes 21 days to like break a habit. Mm -hmm. And so like it's continually just watching your habits that helped with that process and sanctification for me personally. And like there, there came a point where I knew like, okay, I've changed, but the people around me haven't changed. So that's when I knew I had to take myself out of certain situations. Mm, true. It takes maturity. Yeah. It just... Because at the same time, you want... You, like, were called to be a disciple. So, like, you don't want to just be like, hey, I'm changing. And, like, you can, you can see, like, hey, maybe God has me in this person's life still at this moment. Maybe I can, like, help them in a way. Or, like, I can just be a light in their life in a way. But there comes a point where you just have to know yourself when the change isn't going to come from you. Like the seed you planted, just like you don't need to see it grow. Yeah. And that's when you 
move out of that situation. Yeah. That's good stuff. It's funny you said know yourself because we started this talking about Drake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't even ask the music question, but I oh. can't. I can't find a good way to segue it in. I was really. I was trying to grab every word that he was saying, and I was like, it's not gonna click. We can do it another dog. Yeah. We're all wearing dunks, to some degree. And I am dunk. <laughs> you are dunk. Big dunk. The biggest. He didn't even get the reference. Oh. He looked at me crazy. Yeah, Drake. Yeah, Rick Ross, the biggest boss. I have never listened to a single Rick Ross song right, ever right. in my <laughs> life. Huh? <laughs> Maybach music. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us <laughs> on another episode of The Mutual Friend. Hey, wait, did you want to say the thing? I was I was going to whenever you were done. All right, pardon me. Forget everything I just did. We'll just cut right to you. Am I going to outro it now? Wait, song yeah. suggestion? I got one. Yeah, mine is uh, that one song by Rick Ross. Oh, it's so good. Every that one song. Hustling. <laughs> hustling, hustling. No, I, I don't know a single song. I don't have a song suggestion. I have one. Of course. A slapper? Like he <laughs> Remember when slapper he said that? is crazy. Remember when he said he all? Yeah. On the finale? <laughs> that was a great episode. I can't wait to do another Q&A with my brothers, man. Yeah, bro. It's going to be fire. All right. Actually, I'm going a, I'm to a recommend a movie. Oh, okay. It's called The Fighting Fem- Temptations. Great movie. I love that movie so much. I've seen it multiple times growing up. It's not like, it's not like one of those, like pure flicks movies. It's like got Beyonce in it, Cuba Gooding, like back from like '03, but it's basically about a choir director who has to take over for his passing grandmother, and it's just you see the fight of temptations in his life, and I feel like that that really goes well with this, and also the soundtrack, beautiful. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, folks, looks like that's the game. So, um, if you enjoyed this episode, why don't you just why don't you just like it, subscribe, even maybe even drop a comment. That'd yeah. be dope. You know, um, I'd appreciate that. Maybe personally. what about this? Watch. Maybe follow us on social media at the Mutual Friend Official. Now we're talking. Mm-hmm. And even put ice on the cake. If you really, 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 really felt blessed by this, and you want to support the channel, you want to support. Uh, what we're doing, there's many ways to do that. You can do the cash up. You can do um, the GoFundMe. There's many ways. So thank you, of course, for all your support in every way. And uh, with that being said, this has been the Mutual Friend. I'm Dre. And I'm Gabe. And I'm Matt. Did you do that goblin left again? Ah, 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 ah.